Hey guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys, Bojo. Welcome to another vlog. And yes, I told good morning in French, not because I just came from France and showing off, but the car which I'm going to take you on a virtual tour today, it's French too. Yes, it is the new facelifted Citroen C5 Aircross. That's pretty much how they pronounce it in French, Citroen. But let's keep it simple and call it the facelifted C5 from here on. To begin with, let's get into the hood of the car. Oh! Oh my god! Oh, pretty heavy to begin with. Now, there is insulation up there and this is the engine. There are no changes done in the engine. It is pretty much the same, which is a DW10 FC diesel engine with a displacement of 2 liters with max 177 horsepower and it is a four cylinder unit. Let's just close this. So this facelift gets a completely new front end design with redesigned front bumpers, front bumpers and headlamps. They now look more sporty and as you can see that the LED DRL integrate with the chrome strips in the grille. It looks like a piano key, doesn't it? Well, coming down, that is the towing hook and the fog lamps there as is, nothing changed. And we have the wipers over there in which the water spray comes from the inside. And much needed right now because it's raining, that is the sensor. From the side, there's not much of a change. The only change which you can see is for the 18 inch diamond cut alloy wheels. The tire size remains the same which is 235.55. The only change is the alloy design and personally I like the previous one. Rest everything else stays the same including the door handles, the roof rails and the body cladding. Overall the C5 now looks more modern and sharper than the model that it replaces. Let's just move to the rear and see what changed there. At the rear the only change evident is the tail lamps. They have retained 3D LED but the design has changed and now we have the rear wiper and the spoiler as it is nothing changed and as we move down below we can see the fake exhaust winds and Faisal Khan's finger of tooth would be disappointed because no fake stuff and in order to see the real ones you have to bend down somewhere there okay and I am all wet right now <laughs> thanks to the rain that's what no he or she said. Okay, so let's get into the boot. So the tradition of showing the key before the start of the video was deliberately missed because earlier it was just for aesthetics but now we need it actually to open the boot of the car. You know why? Because this car has now got a hands-free power tailgate. All you need to do is this once, it unlocks the boot and this again while you're having the key in your hand so that the boot opens automatically. I'll show you again. Let's get in the boot and see what we have here. We have normal charging 12 volt socket. We have a light and all right, we have an alloy Stephanie. And the boot size is something I'll tell you about in some time because it's very expandable. Let's just close the boot. So let's just hop inside the car. The reason I said let's hop in the car is because these seats are very comfortable. The three seats are retained and all of them can be adjusted, which is reclined and folded individually. They have adjustable headrests too. No center armrest though, because I think they saved that space to give the middle passenger a head, which is very much needed and awesome. Previously, the seats were leather and fabric mixed. Now it's full leather and around 15 mm of thick foam has been added to make the seats more fluffier and comfortable. So the under thigh support legroom knee room is good just like the pre facelift and the headroom is obviously great for me. There is light placement on the top and we have hook and handles on the sides. It continues with the previous features of dual zone climatic control and we have isofix child seats mounts on the rear and both at the front. So the best thing about this car is actually the boot space and the seats. It has a crazy 580 liter boot space and if you extend the rear seat all the way forward, it will expand to 720 liter and in case if you fold the seat, like let me just do this. Okay, not while I'm sitting on it. Yeah. And this. 
in such a way then you will have approximately 1630 liters of space altogether so i've recently driven a storeroom in europe which had an expandable boat of 2126 liters but getting back to cars 1630 is pretty good however the fuel tank capacity of 52 liters is a little less for the car let's go to the front now and before we go inside i want to show you that this is a blind spot monitor which has been added to this car now previously it wasn't there so we have the dead pedal the brake and the accelerator pedal and in case if you're looking for the bonnet release lever over here then it's not there and in case if someone is traveling solo then they have to just close the car go outside the car open the passenger seat and pull this over here they're already in so much of trouble and adding on to this is the liver positioning what what the f what we've got new is a 10 inch infotainment screen replacing the old 8 inch and this is pretty responsive and lag free it also has wireless android auto and carplay also you can see that wireless charging is now available the ac vents were previously over here but now they've been pushed down into a more sleek design which i like apart from the wireless charger they've actually added parking assist uh, where you can leave your hands and you know it self parks whereas electric parking brake hill assists and uh, keyless entry hill descent control rear parking camera tire pressure monitor everything all of these things are constant there's also a large storage area here along with a 12 volt power outlet and two usb a sockets and uh, one of them is for charging and the other is for data and charging both you will see a completely new center console there is a new drive mode button instead of a knob which used to be there earlier and uh, the gear lever is completely replaced and now we have the button so in case if you want to go and ship gears it's basically like this let's just go into the reverse gear and see if they have enhanced any reverse parking camera guidelines okay no it's pretty much the same so the center armrest is as it is over here we have two cup holders which is used for holding my shades right now and the storage space and everything is the same there is no change in the functioning of the panoramic sunroof the digital instrument cluster is the same it got a few ui and graphics upgrade and the theme can also be changed that'll make it look more ultra classy with super crisp fonts and uh, it retains the height adjust seat belt and go up again all right <sighs> leave that let's go to the glove box the glove box is the same decently spaced and you have some ignorable hard plastics below Nuren's face of truth is elated because there are vanity mirrors along with rights on both the driver and the passenger side. The multifunction steering wheel has voice commands and audio control. It feels light. There are wipers on the right, headlights on the left, and the paddle shifters are behind the steering wheel. And they don't move when you move the steering wheel. It's like on a different level behind. The horn is loud enough and... The double laminated front windows and acoustic windshield glass blocks the wind and road noise to the maximum. This was there previously as well. They call it the cocoon effect. We can test it later by sitting inside the car when Fessel is shouting outside. I mean, he's vlogging outside. For optimum comfort, the new C5 also has AQS, a system for purifying the air in the cabin. So that's about it. Let's just go to the driving vlog. So the C5 Aircross is still using the 2.0-litre DW10 FC diesel engine which churns out 177 PS at 3,750 RPM and 400 Newton meters of peak torque at 2,000 RPM. It has 4 cylinders and it is makered to a 8-speed automatic transmission. Power delivery is linear with a nice surge and the lag is well contained. The engine feels really refined and smooth. This car does a 0 to 100 km in 9.5 seconds and it feels decently quick. The 8-speed gearbox doesn't upshift early, ensuring that you get a good punch, but it also does not hold on to a gear when you're driving in the sport or in the manual mode. Mid-range is the strong part and the topping is a little lagging. It also gets vocal in the high rev range. The ride is very good. It's smooth, but you can hear a little bit of tire sounds when you're going through sharp speed breakers. Handling is good and the suspension has progressive hydraulic cushions. They say it would give you a flying on the carpet feel just like the Aladdin but 
in real terms i would say the suspension is really soft so the body roll is a little higher still pro being that there is no nose drive even on heavy braking power is channeled to the front wheels only which means obviously there is no four wheel drive which is actually a con because its closest competitor which is also the brother from another mother i'm talking about the jeep obviously has a four wheel drive option if you found the previous c5 expensive then hold on to that thought because this facelifted c5 costs 36.67 lakhs ex showroom price which is 3 lakhs more expensive than the previous version and 44.4 lakh on road price mumbai making it the most expensive car in the segment This flagship SUV is available in only one variant right now which is the Shine variant. The field variant is currently discontinued and you get this car in seven different color options which are dual tone. So should you avoid it, shortlist it, consider it or buy it? I would say you can consider the C5 Aircross if you're looking for a comfortable SUV with a unique style and also you have the budget to buy a car at this price point. Mercy and Avianto.